And then there's another one that's more like punk and garage rock. And so it's a little bit of everything and it's a cool way to kick off the summer. But um, other that's than awesome, that, the rest man. of our June is pretty mellow because July, I think we're going to have you know two shows a weekend in Orange County, in, in the Inland Empire, and in San Diego. So and, that's going to be crazy. And where can people go to check out any of these events as far as uh, websites or something like that? Um, you know, I will definitely be able to share the website with you in two weeks, but we are redoing it, rebranding it, ah, and uh, it's awesome. almost done. Well, we get, so, um, well, in the meantime, you can search uh, Orange County Music League, San Diego Music League, or Inland Empire Music League on Facebook, uh-huh. and then on Instagram, it's OC Music League, IE Music League, and SD Music League. So That's awesome, man. Pretty, pretty easy to find, and uh, we're going to have a rocking summer and you know, start to get the bands on the same page, and that's the first step to being able to get rid of this thing for good. And All right. what better place to get rid of it than in Southern California where it started? Yeah, dude, absolutely. Well, hey, man, we want to thank you again for being on the show. Um, we'll we'll get we'll, we'll talk, man. We'll talk. We'll have you on in a couple weeks, and uh, we'll go from there. How's that sound? Awesome, man. I look forward to it. Thanks. All right, brother. I'll talk be in touch. It. All right, later. All right, later. Cool. All right, what a good guy, huh? Awesome. Yeah. So I mean, everything he has he is saying, I've been saying. To myself, <laughs> uh, for a very, very long time. I mean, David, you've been in a band. What have you experienced in relation to what he just told us about? Uh, when I started playing Goodbye. music, <laughs> uh, when I started playing music, I was about eighteen or nineteen. I was started. Uh, it was a pay-to-play show. I'm thirty now, so it was a long time ago. Uh, it was not at all what I had thought it would be. They told me, "Oh, here, sell this amount of tickets, and you'll get paid this amount of money," but we're a new band. We didn't sell that many tickets, and that's on our that's on us for not being where we needed to be. Right. Not we being couldn't. realistic, too. I mean, they give you what thirty ish, like sell like ten dollars a piece. Yeah, yeah, and that's three hundred bones yeah. coming out of your pocket if you don't get squat shit. To yeah, show but up. the point is, I understand the method as mm-hmm. to what they're doing. It's like, hey, if you're good, you'll make money doing this. This and it's possible because we have gotten paid before, mm-hmm. uh, but. We did it a few times, and we immediately knew there was there's got to be a better way. And we decided as a band, we'll never do pay to play again. So yeah, yeah. I think as an 18, 19 year old kid who understands that it doesn't work for us, it probably is not going to work for a lot of musicians who are starting. It's probably a lot more successful with a big band who is already established. But for mm-hmm. starting musicians who are trying to get their name out there, it doesn't make sense. They gotta establish themselves, to build that audience before they start jumping into playing the House of Blues. And, but what we're really um just pisses me off is when all the venues that would otherwise have given these bands a chance to come in and maybe even play for free and uh, and not charge anyone, but then the band doesn't expect to get anything in return either. But they're getting to play these 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 places, these venues, these platforms are were were disappearing. These <laughs> were disappearing because of uh, because every venue wanted to adopt the stupid model. So and. and you know that that's yep. why I that that's what started hurting the local uh, band scene and so forth. So yep, and I I I told myself I will never play House of Blues or anything like that mm-hmm. by pay to play ever. And we eventually got there by my old band. We got there. We got to play House of Blues not because we sold a certain number of tickets, mm-hmm. not because like hey we like paid them to let us play there, but because our skill and talent got us there. Yeah, and that was the most amazing feeling like you can ever accomplish as a musician. And totally. I feel like you rob a lot of these young musicians from that. You let them play these big venues for these insane prices to sell these tickets, and it's just they just paid to do that, and they think oh right. we're great, we got right. to play House of Blues, and they get to say that, but really. They didn't let their talent carry them there, and totally. I think they need to learn that. And musicians need to learn that their and, talent needs. And to you know, the um, I don't want to make them seem like predators, but these motherfuckers they prey on the high school kids. No, they're dicks. Yeah, they're the the, uh, the the kids that don't know any better. Yeah. You know, they uh, they they're just like sell this amount of tickets. Yeah, you can do it, and then you keep the rest. Yep. It sounds nice, but they can't really pull it off. And foo. Um, how many uh how many chicks did you just swipe right on while we were talking? This motherfucker is taking the approach of you playing video games during the sports segment. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like on plenty of fish or something? Uh, I was on plenty of fish, and I'm also on coffee meets bagel. And um, giggity, giggity, goo. Goo, goo. looky there, foo got God, some got hungry. some digits. Oh shit, she cute? Yeah, she's pretty <laughs> nice. cute. Nice, nice. She's um, older than me too. <laughs> Get it? Me too. Oh, no. Shit. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. I, I, God damn it. Okay. Uh, well, so what do you think, man? From your perspective, some guy who just 
sometimes goes to shows. Um, Only when they don't play cover songs. What the fuck? I, th- I think they. I think it's important for bands to play cover songs. Yeah, that's I what gets people important. to care. Yeah, it not a little bit. I lame. La- no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, I, don't, I, I was I like, gonna hear I like, you. I was gonna be like, I like oh, going shit, w- this guy has something to say. Yeah, I like going once in a <laughs> while. Um, I prefer to hear a bunch of original music because that's I'm kind of spoiled because that's all the good music I feel like is just original shit you never heard before. I completely agree with you. Yeah, so, yeah. I think I should reiterate my point. I think a band, a good band, is eighty percent originals. 20% covers during their live show. Take not not like take studio notes, albums. everyone. Yeah. I think at yeah, uh, totally. I think yeah, the successful rock star over here knows everything. I no, I just think in order no, for But uh, I mean, y- y- we're <laughs> talking about the same recipe here, you know, plain, well, y- plain originals. Um cover I'll give you this. This guy did used to peddle a bunch of bullshit <laughs> in my and younger by, years, yeah. And by that I mean in, you know, he got one of my girlfriends to go with me uh to a couple I didn't of even shows. like that bitch, dude. It's true. <laughs> um, yeah, she, she what? She hated the venue too. By the way, we all hated the venue. Yeah, so Fucking chain reaction. I'll yeah. never go there again. What made it worse was, um, I don't know. The first time I went to the Hotlines premiere, uh huh. Um, that was our first show. We it was sucked. your first show. It, to us. it was cool, mm-hmm. um, but it, I just think the audience sucked on that one. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And you guys are playing songs about like getting down and getting like Oh jeez. <laughs> drinking beer, you know, passing brews. Right. And right. That, you know, the audience was totally not having it. Dude, so. we were trying to have a good time. Uh, yeah, Dude, and David, to be this fair, the audience was not having that bullshit. We were like They were like, Hello "We want there, children." And they were just like, <laughs> "Goodbye." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were totally not feeling it. They were totally being dicks. It was a bunch of high school kids with their arms crossed, and that's what I was telling John about. Like, there's no camaraderie anymore, not only with the musicians, but the fans that show up because they're showing up for their friend's band, and they're going to be total dicks to anybody else. To tell leave you. right away. Yeah, and then they leave Which right away. Which is the away. only reason why I was a dick while I was there, because everyone was being a dick to me. <laughs> so you got to stand your ground. you got to stand your ground in these hostile, uh, hostile events that they're being set up. Seriously. <laughs> um, but, I mean... Kind of looking at it abstractly, uh, it makes sense for the bar to be able to bring that many people in, given how many, you know. But but not when let's, they... let's say let's say it's tickets. Mm-hmm. Let's say you're given our sets away to five bands, and then they each got to bring in twelve people. Yeah, that's sixty people coming to your bar that weren't going to come to your bar. Would it not be if these bands are playing? Uh, so I don't understand why there be. I don't understand good business practice on their part. If they're not letting the band play for free or if the band is playing there, they'll be like, hey, you have to at least play for this long. Um, and either we're going to give you, you know, a percentage of the bar tab or I mean, theoretically, they're a bar. They're already open. They're going to get people coming. Now you're bringing the fucking bands are bringing the cherries on top. So why why are they charging so much or why why are they doing what they're doing? I'm kind of like lost, really. It's because okay, so here's one of the things: the pay to pay. Oh, we're going on to this, but anyway, the pay to play people basically tell the bar they'll give them a certain amount of the money they make. They keep a certain amount of the money, and they promise bands a certain cut as well mm-hmm. if they sell a certain number of tickets. But doesn't matter really how many tickets they sell. If they sell anything at all, anything, they get a cut. Uh, the the promoter gets a cut, and the bar gets a cut. But the band doesn't get a cut because they, they sell enough. Sell. Unless they sell enough. But now and here's personally here's what I think should be, is a better solution. I think. Uh, then this kind of goes out to the bar owners. Uh, mm-hmm. They need to do a better job of quality control for their own place. And they need to be willing to pay a good band that they feel is right for their uh, for, for, for their audience. You know, whoever is out there, you know, listening in their in their bar. Uh, I think they need to be the judge and be like, OK, I need to have a Spanish band or I need to have a rock band or I need to have a DJ or whatever. Hire the the best that they can find in their local city, in which I suggest any bartender or any bar owner out there to find local artists in, in your city and hire the best ones well, that you can find. And, totally. And, and try to support them and put their uh, music at the forefront and show, like, hey, we do have quality musicians out there that can actually, you know, perform and, you know, bring a lot of energy to their place and not be afraid to, like, you know, hire some of the better ones but they again it follows on them and quality control to really take the time to find good artists because they're out there not everybody is but they're out there it's like joe c here we uh 
we go used to go to this bar off of Citrus all the time. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, this guy's been in the band for a while. This guy could not get a response from the fucking owner for like two well, and a half years. Well, I heard years. that guy's a douche anyway. Yeah, so like. Yeah, he doesn't even pay his like really good professional acts that go in there. Um, so, uh, you, you, but you know what? It's better than the pay for play. That's for sure. I mean, I'd rather pay nothing and have a good time. And maybe if I was going to go to a bar that Saturday, cool. At least I get to play my guitar in front of people. Yeah. Totally. Uh, and maybe sell some merch because that's an option too. Yeah, I think the band. I think the band should rely on merch themselves yeah. as as much as they can. I mean, it's nice to have someone else, you know, sponsor you guys and be like, "Hey, we're gonna pay for you guys to play." Oh, yeah, that's always totally. great. That's always mm-hmm. great. And then at the same time, the band comes out there with their merch, with their identity intact, with them as tight as a unit as they can be, with because their music will speak for themselves. Mm-hmm. And then it's their job to put the identity out there to who they are. And the the better they portray that, the more 100% they stand behind their vision, other people believe it too because they believe it and that's what's most yeah. important. And then people will totally listen and go out and support you because they love your music and what you, you have to bring. And if, well, it's a, if it's somewhere that has good music, people are going to have a good time. And at that point, dude, that's how people end up <laughs> spending more money than they should. And, you know, that's how people make money. Put yeah. on a good show. Yeah. So. Well, let's put a bookmark on this, guys, because we can go on all fucking day with this thing. Totally. You're and not, and we're going to have John on in a couple of weeks. So we yeah, can, that'd, be, that'd be a great time yeah, to tackle dude. that. So, um, Fu, uh, how about a little uh, showbiz update, huh? Sure. All let's right. get it on. So, Fu, um, you don't watch The Walking Dead anymore, right? Uh, you stopped watching in season what? Seven, I think. Seven-ish? Yeah. So, I think they're in the middle of season nine right now, or they just, uh, or, or eight. I really don't fucking know. But they, 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 they're they getting ready to say goodbye to Rick Grimes. Get Kill him off? I don't know. I don't know. Andrew Lincoln, who has starred as the lead of AMC's The Walking Dead since the pilot, will reportedly be leaving the series after appearing in only a handful of episodes in the upcoming Season 9. We obviously don't yet know for sure if he'll be killed off, but this is The Walking Dead, and it's pretty easy to kill people off, if uh, if I do say so. They, they could kind of do the scene without him. So I got this information from E! News. Um, so, and as a matter of fact, uh, Rick's son Carl, Chandler Riggs, uh, he just died after being bitten by a walker, so uh, leaving... Le- Leaving Rick as as the person who's going to die, uh, it's not that far fetched uh, in in the next season. I understand that in the comic books they even sliced off his hand at some point. Do you know anything about that, man? Um, going from the comics, yeah, just the comics alone. Uh, going through the comics alone, I only know up to as far as that. Rick is still the main. Rick is still the main guy, uh-huh. and there's no plans to get rid of him anytime soon. He's the most badass guy in there. Um, well, I, I don't think I've gotten as far. I'm not too far behind, but I mean, Rick's kind of the guy. And actually, Carl should be alive going by the comics still. So they already fucked that up. What else can they fuck up? Food? Well, Tell I think me. also the Carl's uh, the actor, Chandler Riggs. Uh, he grew up too fast for, for the show, too. I mean, I He's guess still a kid in the comics. Right? Li- I mean, but that's the comics. They can totally make the show about him getting sudden, older. Yeah, it's just the comics. OK, listen to this. I, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, uh, he actually bought a house. In uh, of course in Georgia, he did. of course he fucking well, did. because he thought he'd be fucking working there for the foreseeable oh. future. Well, and it was a really good franchise until Negan came. Strolling well, get this, in, and, strolling and, in. And, and and Collider was the first to report the news. Uh, reports also say that Norman Reedus Daryl will be stepping as will <laughs> will be stepping up as the new lead of the show, meaning that at least we can bet he's safe for the time being. I mean, I guess, but he doesn't say shit, and he's boring character. So what the fuck, dude? Well, I mean, it wasn't as exciting as other seasons, and in other seasons, I would argue that people were more invested. It was more in um, it was more in, in the culture. It was more ingrained. Now it's just the oh, cool, it's Sunday. What's on Walking Dead? Cool, let's watch it. Throw it on. Yeah, throw I it heard on. the uh, the fear of the Walking Dead is uh, is going to catch some ground though. Uh, I hear that one is uh, doing particularly well. I, I haven't, be- I really haven't checked it out after uh, season two, but uh, I, heard, I heard the episode where they merged uh, the me- episode where they merged uh, Morgan. Uh huh. I heard it was a fantastic episode. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, I heard he was going to cross over to that. Mm-hmm. So um, a- another thing I wanted to talk about, other than The Walking Dead, is uh, the top 
music festivals of 20-